G'day, welcome to another episode of Country Life on the Coast. My name is Sean, and on today's episode, we're gonna get the old cement mixer going. So a little while ago, I put a video up trying to get this thing going, and in the end, it beat me. I couldn't get it going. And for the last couple of months, every now and again, while it's been under the house, I've gone under there, tried to get it going, and haven't been able to get it going either. I put a video on most of those, uh, recording it, but since I couldn't get it going, well, I haven't put anything on my YouTube channel. Well, a few of you guys have been really helpful and put some ideas and suggestions about what to do to try and get it to run. And so today, we're going to use some of those ideas and see if we can get this to run. One of the comments that was put up said, need to change the spark plug or open up the gap. Well, in the last couple of months, I had actually bought a new spark plug and put in it. So that is one thing that we did, that I've done since the last video. One of the other things that the guy said is spray some like starter fluid, something in there. So I've just bought this starting fluid uh, from Super Cheap Auto. And what I'm gonna do is, as per one of the suggestions, was actually take the spark plug out and spray a little bit in there first. I have the fuel turned off at the moment, even though there is fresh fuel in here. If I can get it running for a bit with this, then we'll crank that on and hopefully get it to keep running. All right, well, I just checked the gap and I've actually opened it up a bit more than what it was as well. So let us spray some fluid in here, see what happens. Okay. So what I've found, this screws into the block, or the head, I suppose it is, and that was just tapped in there. So when I undid this earlier, I didn't actually undo it, or, and previously replaced it, but when it went to fire, obviously the pressure in there just blew this out. What I'm gonna try and do, is see if I can tap this in there, find a way to tap this in as tight as possible and give it another go and see if we can uh, get this to seat and seal and... All right, time to put this back together. I've got a bit of an idea. We'll see if this works. So I'll put this outer piece on first. So just to explain what I was doing there, I brought the rod on out just so I had a 12 volt battery. And I'm just using a timing light because it's got an induction uh, connection over the spark plug lead. So I just want to make sure that it was getting, well, getting power to the spark plug. And like I said earlier, it's a brand new, pretty well a brand new spark plug. So just when I had it up there, I was pretty certain I could hear it and couldn't quite see it, but I just wanted to be sure. One thing that this test did verify for me was it was definitely spark getting up there or getting to the spark plug. Using a timing light like this is just a good way to check that something's getting through. So uh, I've done that on other vehicles before as well when I've been fault finding. Just a simple easy way if you do have one of these. All right guys, so I'm just having a look. And so this is the fuel line here that comes in to the bottom of all this bit. And this knob here adjusts how much fuel's coming into it. This pops up and down sometimes. 
which I believe is where the air is actually coming in. So I was spraying in here before with the starter fluid, trying to get it to crank, you know, get, trying to get it to fire. But there's also this little bolts thing here that appears to be maybe brass. I don't really know. But what I'm thinking is I might spray some fluid in here, some starter fluid in there, and then put the cap on and give it a couple of really good cranks. See if that does anything to uh, help fire it to life. I'm starting to run out of ideas. And um, soon I think I'm going to start just turn the fuel back on and try that again. So we'll spray some starter fluid in here. And give it a crank, or we'll put this back in obviously, and then give it a crank and see what we can do. good well guys after ages and ages of trying we got him going Woo I'm not sure what I did differently but it's running Well, there we go guys it runs I didn't have the camera set up because I've been trying to get it to run each afternoon after work and couldn't get it going and had hours of film in the end of it so I just came out and didn't give up just keep going and it fired I'm so happy now the thing is to give it a run every week or two just to keep it so it starts easy because once you've got it going normally it'll start pretty easily after that so thank you for the people that have made some comments and helped. Based on some of those comments, I actually found out that the cement mixer itself is called a light burn model. If I can find the link, I'll put a copy in the, in the description of this video of where I found that info. And this engine 
apparently by what I could read the light burn cement mixer you could buy and then put your own engine on it and this engine is a Rosebury 2C model around the 1950s from what I can understand so yeah I've found out some more history of it thank you very much for those comments because that helped sort of pinpoint what I was looking for but that's all we have in this episode so thank you so much for watching please hit that like and subscribe button that'd be great and we'll catch you next time. God bless.